Welcome to Know How. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Balasser. And I'm Brian Burnett. For the next uh, 45 minutes, yeah, an give hour, or take. 60 minutes, 70 minutes, two hours. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we're recording this at ooh, almost 8 o'clock on Thursday. Super special edition. Who knows what's right? We're kind of tired. We're kind of loopy. We may just <laughs> never stop. Well, and, and anyways, we're going to give you some of the projects that we've been working on the last couple of weeks and days and months. Things we've been geeking out on. Exactly. Yeah. So that you can geek out on your own. But before we do that, I want to talk batteries. Yes. So... The main limiting factor with batteries and electric vehicles is that they it takes a while to charge them, they're expensive, but every day there seems to be a new advancement, and this is one you just came across? This is one that we just found. This was actually covered in a story about a bus bar. It's this charging device for, uh, for electronic buses. Uh, the, one of the biggest, as you mentioned, one of the biggest drawbacks of batteries has always been that they don't charge up that quickly, right? right. Uh, you use up a lot of the power, which is great. I mean, you can store a lot, especially in a lithium-ion battery. I mean, mm -hmm. lithium-ions are found in our phones, our laptops, pretty much everywhere now because they are easy to use, because they hold a relatively um, large amount of power. Relatively safe, you know, as long as you use the right charger and they don't explode yeah, or you pierce them when you're flying a quadcopter into sure those, a wall. Yeah. yeah, actually, Alex, I believe I have a YouTube video in there that can show you what will happen if you accidentally puncture a uh, lithium-ion battery. You see, these are all held within plastic bags, like Li-Poly, lithium-poly. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're great because they can form fit to, say, the case of your computer right. or your quadcopter. Oh. But oh, no. that happens oh, no. if you puncture the bag. So, yeah, you Jeez. just yeah, stay. Don't, don't do, don't uh, do yeah, that. Yeah, that doesn't seem quite as safe as I was and, hoping. And the best part about this, they're trying to use a CO2 fire extinguisher. That will not extinguish a lithium no. fire. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, and what would you do in that situation? Uh, you would let it burn. Yeah, because even starving it of oxygen or throwing it in water wouldn't. Do well, anything, the only right? uh, salt water will actually destroy the uh, the chemistry that's reacting. But I mean, hmm. where unless you're walking around with a bottle of salt water. <laughs> in case of emergency, we have like a, a break glass and there's salt water. Unless there. you're next to the ocean, you can just toss the whole thing in. In which case, you're just going to ride off the vehicle. Uh, yeah, you just push it into yeah. the ocean. Oh, uh, but here's the cool thing. Hmm. Some scientists over in Singapore have figured out a way to increase the current, the uh, charging current and the discharge current of a standard lithium battery. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had this technology for a while. We've, we've used carbon nanotubes. Right, which are really expensive. To Crazy expensive, yeah. very rare, hard to make. Mm -hmm. uh, but the way that a lithium ion battery works is uh, the chemistry, which allows you to store uh, electricity, electrons, mm -hmm. actually starts to break down as you force electrons into it. Right, right? and that's why battery life, batteries start to die after a certain amount of charges and stuff like that? Yeah, typically 1,000 to 2,000 charges, charges, a lithium-ion battery will, will no longer hold a charge. Mm -hmm. uh, you've seen it on your phone, you know? Yeah, after it seems like after about a year, my phone's batteries start to hold a little bit less of a charge from there on. Right, so it's a well-known phenomenon. But what these folks have done is they figured out a way to get the benefits of having carbon nanotubes. And that is, in, inside the chemistry, a carbon nanotube greatly increases the amount of surface area you have, which means mm -hmm. that increases the amount of area at which the reaction can take place. So you can, it's using the, uh, the area more efficiently. Then. Exactly, yeah. right. The, chem the chemistry doesn't have to be stressed as much, which means it lasts longer. Cool. Now, they have figured out a way to get the effect of a carbon nanotube, but using titanium dioxide. Which is something that's a lot more prevalent. It's everywhere, yeah. right? It's in the soil. We in use it sunscreen. as sunscreen. Yeah, f sunscreen uses yeah. titanium dioxide. It's essentially titanium rust. Mmm, sounds and, delicious. Yes, and their process, you could, yeah, you could eat it. <laughs> their process has allowed them to take titanium dust, mm -hmm. uh, rust, sorry, and turn it into nanotubes. So you get titanium dioxide nanotubes. You yeah. dump those into a gel. You mix that gel with the lithium ion chemistry, mm -hmm. and suddenly you have a battery, and this is the amazing part, yeah. that doesn't last 1,000 or 2,000 charges, or doesn't last one year or two year, but lasts 20 years. So they've increased the lifespan of a battery by tenfold. Tenfold. Basically. But it's not the lifespan that they're after, it's the charging capacity. And, oh, how fast it can charge. Yes, because yeah. this, that's a problem. If you look at a standard lithium ion battery, so this is a lithium cell, this is mm -hmm. a 3.7 volt lithium ion, a lithium poly cell. The limiting factor here is I can only push so much current into it before it bursts into flames. <laughs> because, <laughs> right. Yeah, right? because I, I'm overloading the chemistry and it will die. 
Well, the lithium dioxide, again, because it's increasing the surface area available in that chemistry, mm -hmm. I can now pump a ton more power, which means, like, for example, okay. let's say I had something like a Tesla, a performance supercar, correct? Right. And even then, e even when uh, it's designed to charge quickly, it's still going to take me a good, you know, hour, two hours, even the crazy fast charger. To get back up to 100%. To get it back up to 100%. And every time I do that, every time I fast charge a lithium battery, I'm actually damaging it. I'm reducing right. its, its life. This technology could potentially allow us to go from zero to full on a Tesla battery in about 45 seconds. That's awesome. And <laughs> it doesn't damage the battery. The battery can handle that, that, that amount of current. And it also de it can discharge uh, more power than normal, which means I can get more power to the wheels without risking any <laughs> of the As far as traction will go, right? Like, right. <laughs> because you just will be spinning your tires otherwise. But... Uh, so have they implemented this with the buses you were saying? Yeah, or? yeah, they, they were actually testing it right now. So the, the, it's called the, uh, the bus bar. And mm -hmm. the idea is it's a, a, a electronic bus that's using these lithium, di lithium titanium dioxide batteries. Uh, they pull into a station, a bar drops down from like a post that's hanging over the bus and it pumps super high voltage. <laughs> and it charges the battery from zero to full in about two minutes, which is about the that, time of a bus stop. That's how long, yeah, that's how long you're waiting to let people on and off. So right. that's that's awesome. Yeah, now, now the amazing thing about this is not just that it's cool technology and we can charge batteries faster, right. but imagine what the current battery business is built on in the electronic vehicle market. It's, I need more batteries that contain more power because I only want to charge it up once right. because it takes 20 hours for me to get to a full charge. But the more batteries you add, the more weight you add, which then, de it's like Decre diminishing yeah. Re return. Yeah, it's, it's like putting fuel into a spaceship where uh, you could put more fuel, but then you need more fuel to carry that fuel. It's the same thing with batteries. You could right. put more batteries, but then you need more batteries to carry those batteries. Right, right. If I knew that I could charge my car in 30 seconds mm -hmm. rather than two, four, eight hours, I could potentially only carry enough for, say, 30 miles of range uh, down from you know, 75 mm -hmm. and just count on stopping for 30 seconds someplace that will charge up my vehicle and right. then go again. If this was something that was like implemented at like a, a street intersection or something right. like that, if you're at a stoplight... You're there for, you know, 30 seconds to a minute anyway. What if that was charging your battery at the same right. time? And, and I like that just because it means finally we can get electronic vehicles down to a decent curb weight, uh, yeah. not weighed down. It also means since I have to carry fewer batteries, I get more range off of my existing batteries, more performance, and ultimately it means there's less toxic junk that goes into the atmosphere because I have to create a new battery pack for my car. Right, right. Now, uh, remember when we did that review for BYB of the uh, the electric motorcycle? Yeah. The biggest con was that... Charging. It, charging. And so when I used it for my commute, it made sense because it was like 20 miles from my house to here, and so 40 miles total in a day. But Tony, when he tried to go to work, uh, he lives in Emery Mill, which is like 80 miles away, all freeway. He wasn't able to make it. But... I mean, if you're able to charge the battery that quickly, you, he could have just stopped somewhere. Exactly. For, like, pull off the seconds. freeway, 30 Plug seconds. Plug in, done, go. go yeah. and, and actually, Rourke, uh, Rourke's in the chat room and saying, well, what does that do to the duty cycle? Well, you know, we already talked about that. Yeah. Because you've got these titanium dioxide nanotubes inside the chemistry, you're not stressing the chemistry. Right. You're, not, you're not forcing electrons into it against the, uh, the, the stability of, of the lithium polychemistry. That means that it lasts a lot longer. Again, from two years to 20 years. So you get a longer lasting battery that can hold as much or more power, mm -hmm. that can charge and discharge more quickly, that doesn't cost anything more than a current lithium poly battery. I mean, it's kind of no That's winner. cool. And I, I mean, as far as battery technology goes, it's only going to get better from this point. Yeah. And uh, I mean, <laughs> we were watching Top Gear earlier today, and the biggest uh, cons with electric vehicles is the expense and the range. Yeah. But it seems like every year it's getting a little bit better, and with the, the nanotube technology and stuff like that. Uh, I'm looking forward to that stuff. So you heard it here, folks. <laughs> the future of electronic vehicles is rust. Is rust. That's kind of weird, right? Yeah, yeah, it is strange. Huh. That's but what uh, it is, titanium dioxide. I, I like that idea. Now, now we're all about battery technology. We're all about fixing our things. And, you know, a lot of us are used to having to open up our devices to pull out those old lithium-ion batteries.